was a weird dream. Must be from working on Doodle Dash all night. Which reminds me, I'm excited to share with y'all what I've been working on. I decided to embrace my inner Taylor Swift for that dream sequence, so leave a comment down below if by the end of this episode you understand what that entire sequence meant. If someone gets it right, I'll appear in a future Learn to Fly episode as a dancing mega dash. Anyhow, hey y'all, welcome back to Learn to Fly. In this second season of Learn to Fly, my teammate Eric and I learned how to build out a game with Flutter called Doodle Dash. It's a classic platformer game with a dashy twist. If you want to catch up on how we built the game's core functionality, check out the previous episode, which we'll have linked in the video description. For this episode, we've added more polish to the game, like sound effects and background music, have done some cleanup, upgraded the code base, we'll talk about tooling, and finally, we'll give a preview of this Flutter game console. So without further ado, let's jump in. Okay, so before we dive too deep, you know what's super important for a game? Being able to get back to the main menu. You know what Eric and I forgot to include in our game? A button to return to the main menu from the game over screen. Whoops. That was the first order of business that I wanted to tackle. Fortunately, the architecture that we set up for the game came in handy. We had different methods responsible for each part of setting up the game. So adding this go home feature meant that I added a text button that said go home and then had it call the methods to reset all of the flame components, like Dash's position and clearing the game over menu and then showing the main menu. Next comes integrating audio into the game. I hit up our production team and asked, hey y'all, would you be able to get me some background music for this game? They said, yeah. But because they're absolutely awesome, I got a drive folder with not only just the MP3 file for the background music, but sound effects too. audio using the Flame Audio package, which in turn uses the Audio Players package. I didn't dig too deep into the features that come with this package. I just wanted to enable disable audio, play the background music on loop, and play the sound effects. First, I added the audio directory as an asset in the pub spec. Then I used Flame Audio's load method to cache the audio tracks so that they would play quicker when activated. Once that setup was done, playing the audio meant telling Flame Audio to play a particular audio file by giving it a string with the file name. I want the game to default to audio off and allow the player to turn it on if they wanted to. This meant I had a state boolean that would be switched on or off using the toggle audio method. I checked this value every time before activating a sound effect. The background music is different because it starts playing and continues looping until you explicitly stop it. Between initializing things, toggling things, checking state, and calling Flame Audio's play method, I decided to create an entirely separate audio manager class to keep track of audio. It was the best decision ever. The logic is less scattered and much more organized, plus it's less distracting when glancing over the code. I also did some more housekeeping things like code cleanup. Again, can you believe that code that I myself wrote only a few months ago was so hard to read? Yes. Yes, I can. I also bumped the Dart SDK version along with package versions in the pub spec. A perk that comes with bumping the SDK version is that you get access to new features. In this case, I got to play around with patterns a bit more by using them in the Doodle Dash code. Now, we talk about code a lot here on Learn to Fly. I mean, it's Flutter, so most of the work that we do is coding. But one thing that I want to take time to talk about is the tools that I found helpful. I was fortunate enough to meet a fellow named Gilham during my adventure to Flutterford Extended to London, and he just happens to be one of the maintainers for Flame. Well, it turns out we're basically the same person, and he's been a huge help for me in working with Flame. He pointed out that I could use debug mode to assist in working on the game. Using debug mode highlights the boundaries for each component in the Flame game, and I was able to use this to position the hitbox anchor without having to guess and check. I also learned that I could add an FPS text component so that it shows the game's frames per second performance. 
I also mentioned previously that I upgraded Flutter versions, which means that I used Dart Analyze to find issues that popped up from upgrading, and then Dart Fix to automatically fix most of those issues. This is also a good time to mention, you could probably already tell that a lot of this learning process for Eric and I was just building things from scratch, stringing things together, and figuring it out as we went. I think I can speak for both of us when I say that we thoroughly enjoyed learning this way. However, if y'all want a quicker start to building games in Flutter with less building from scratch, check out the Flutter Casual Games Toolkit. The toolkit is a Flutter project template that comes with many pre-built game components that are ready to be used right out of the box. Things like the main menu, sound effects, music, game management, and crash reporting, which we didn't even have time to integrate into Doodle Dash. The Flutter team is planning to add more features and resources to the Casual Games Toolkit, so give it a try and let us know what you'd like to see improved. Finally, there's an entire separate video that you can watch on this, so I won't spend too much time on it, but I built a game console with Flutter and Raspberry Pi. It has gamepad controls and runs Doodle Dash, but I think it qualifies that as a game console, right? This is Learn to Fly after all, so I want to highlight two times where I found myself asking for help and working with the wonderful people in the Flutter community. First off, Johan came in so clutch on this project. He helped me architect a mix-in to extend Flame's functionality so that it would support the Pi's game hat controls. If you're watching, Johan, thank you so very much. The other time was when I ran into a bug with the RPI GPIO package, which I was using to read the game hat input control, like the, the controller and the buttons. I was able to narrow down the issue to the fact that I was using a newer Pi 4, which initialized the Pi's GPIO pins differently compared to previous Pi's. To be honest with you, I had zero idea where to even begin with updating the native code myself. I had opened an issue on the package's GitHub repo, and so I added all the research and troubleshooting that I'd done. Dan, the package maintainer, was extremely nice and thanked me for providing helpful info. According to Dan, the information that I found researching the problem actually gives him what he needs to update the package on his end. So he's going to be working on that. Thanks, Dan. What this experience reinforced for me is what's always been said in the community, and that's the fact that contributing to Flutter includes a whole lot more than writing code and opening PRs. If you're interested in learning more about how everything came together, check out mine and Camille's Google I.O. session called Flutter, Dart, and Raspberry Pi. So, for someone who came into this whole project without previous experience building games, it's been so much fun learning to build Doodle Dash. The fact that it was built with Flutter was truly the cherry on top. The experience was made even better getting the opportunity to partner up with Eric. And of course, getting to document the process and sharing with y'all is a big reason why I love the series so much. I don't get a chance to respond to a lot of the comments, but I thoroughly enjoy reading all of them. So thank you so much for following along with us on our learning journey. For next season, we're going to try learning a few new things. We want to learn how to integrate Flutter with other technologies like Firebase, and we'd love to get your opinion. What technologies would you like to see built into a Flutter app? Let us know if you have any ideas in mind, and we'll try to make it happen on the next season of Learn to Fly. And that's a wrap for season two of Learning to Fly. Thanks so much for watching, and uh, well, I'll catch you in the next season. Bye.